Hello, this is Candace. Thank you for joining me in the warm-up area. The first thing that I want to do is introduce you to a couple of my clients. I'd like you to meet Charlie and Sam. Their stories are fairly typical of people who experience shyness and social anxiety, so you probably will be able to relate to them in some ways. Charlie and Sam will also serve as concrete examples for us. So it'll help in terms of the learning process. That's going to be helpful as you go along in the program since you'll have these examples to look to, to compare with, instead of just using abstract ideas. Charlie and Sam represent actual clients that I've worked with, and their problems and issues are ones that have been expressed by actual people. So although Charlie and Sam are not the client's real names, and the pictures that I'm about to show you aren't their actual pictures, their stories are based on true events and issues from real people. Okay, so let's meet Charlie. Charlie was promoted to a managerial position, a promotion that he accepted with extreme reluctance because of the public speaking demands of that particular job. Charlie is fairly comfortable socializing with others, but has had a very hard time with public speaking, dating back to a disastrous classroom speech in seventh grade. Charlie recalls that after the first line of his speech back in grade seven, his mind went blank. His heart was racing and he felt dizzy. He told the teacher he wasn't feeling well, so she sent him to the nurse and he was sure he could see his classmates making fun of him as he left the room. Since then, Charlie has been fearful of getting anxious and messing up again. So he's avoided public speaking at all costs. He declined to be best man at his brother's wedding. He let his wife do all the talking at his own wedding. And he's chosen jobs that didn't require much in the way of presentations or participation in meetings, even if it meant losing out on money and on cash flow. He had wanted to turn down his promotion, but was too embarrassed to tell his boss about his anxiety. Now in this position, Charlie will have to chair weekly meetings and give presentations for upper management and for clients. Whenever he allows himself to think about these new responsibilities, his mind fills with worries. You know, that his mind will go blank, that his heart will race so fast that he won't be able to speak, that coworkers will notice that he is anxious and think there's something wrong with him. The worries seem endless. Charlie is currently well-respected, among his colleagues, and he fears that everything will fall apart, that they'll discover that he is incompetent and incapable of doing his job. Charlie cannot see how he's going to cope in his new role. Okay, so that's Charlie. Let's meet Sam. Sam is a 33-year-old office worker who has been shy for as long as she can remember. She is nervous around most people, especially strangers, and worries that she has nothing interesting to say and that people find her boring. Sam spends most of her time engaged in solitary hobbies and keeps to herself at work. Lately, she has been feeling very lonely and has come to the realization that she truly wants to connect more with other people, to have more friends, including a boyfriend, and better relationships with her neighbors and co-workers. Sam has been trying to build up the courage to meet new people by taking classes in photography, but the thought of having to introduce herself to a class full of strangers is overwhelming for her. She worries that other people will hear her shaky voice and think she's weird or a weak person. She would love to join a gym, but is concerned that her shaky hands will be so obvious that people will ask her what's wrong, causing her to feel completely singled out and embarrassed. She'd rather just blend in and not be noticed for any reason. Sam has considered joining a dating service, but she can't imagine that any guy would find her interesting, not interesting enough to go out with her anyway. Sam is very disappointed with the way her life has turned out so far and isn't sure how to make things better. Okay, so that's Charlie and Sam, and we'll return to their stories throughout the program, and you'll see what actions that they took to improve their lives. Now, in their pictures right now, they look a little down, but I assure you that their stories do improve. They do have happy endings.
So think of them as friends helping you out along your journey. Okay, so we're clear on Charlie's and Sam's stories. Let's get clear on your story. Okay, so to do that, please join me on the next video.